Okay, we're here with another Roundabout Fed Cup in Den Bosch. We have Rebecca Marino with us. And Rebecca, I want you to make me feel good here because I hope I'm six feet tall. And I see that you're six feet tall, so I'm hoping you're six foot one. Yeah, I'm over six feet. I'm about six one and a half, if you want to be exact. So. Oh boy, that's good news for me. <laughs> um, when, you, when you think about um, what you've done and when I come back, what about when you first started thinking about playing again? What's the process of... I'm hitting the ball okay, and then that you know, kind of really play with the pros again, and then getting better. But really, how did it sort of go in steps that you really believed you could play, you know, at the top level again? Um, well, it started as sort of a, a grain of thought last uh, in 2017 through the summer, and then we had the tournament in Vancouver, the Van Open, and uh, I was a hitting partner there, and that's when I started to be able to hit with the girls and sort of feel that I actually could play again, and it was. Sort of through playing tournaments again, getting a lot of match play, starting pretty much exactly a year ago from now in Turkey, sort of give it, getting the confidence and belief through all those matches. But as you were coming along, were there doubts that you could play as well as you had before at some point, just hitting the ball or movement, or did it take a certain level of fitness as well? Well, of course I had to build my fitness up. Uh, from taking five years off, it's not going to be coming back immediately. So. I was uh, a little hesitant and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to play at the same level or close to it. So, um, you know, after a year down the road, I feel a lot more confident in uh, my abilities and I'm glad I jumped into it. Was there one moment when it sort of the click happened and you thought, you know, I can play at a pretty good level again? I think it was through the summer. Uh, we have all the Canadian series of ITFs and as well as Rogers Cup and that gave me a lot of confidence having a couple top 100 wins. Um, sort of the self-belief came back with that. What are the good things you have now that you didn't have, say, six years ago? Maybe mentally, physically, something's different, or is it still the same, basically, Rebecca Marino? I, th I think I'm still the same person. I still have the same uh, determination and motivation. I maybe have a little bit more maturity on my side, and I know what's important in my, my life. and. Uh, Having experience outside of the tennis court makes me feel like I have a very um, very full and balanced life. So I think that's maybe the main difference between then and now. Um, I think the last time you played Fed Cup was with Jeannie Bouchard uh, in Slovenia. Um, this is a bit of a tricky question, of course, but six years later, she was kind of the phenom coming up then. Bianca's kind of the phenom coming up now. Do you see similarities and differences with the two of them? I mean... It's hard to say they're, they're two different players and they have two different game styles. I think uh, we're really fortunate in Canada to have amazing depth in our program and that we're having people coming out of our junior program. Um, and I think that's huge kudos, kudos to Tennis Canada and the National Training Centre. Both Jeannie and Bianca have come out of that program. So I think that's something you can, you can compare and I think they're both really strong women and good role models for, for young, uh, young women in Canada. Stroke for stroke, what, what on the court does Bianca have this special? I think Bianca has really good touch and feel of the ball. She can also read the court really well, so that's why she's good in both singles and doubles. And uh, she has a very light and easy personality as well, so um, she bounces back and works, works her butt off on the court every day. It's really fun to see. I was reading a piece that was in the New York Times, and you were talking about what happened when you stopped playing and all that, and you sort of related a lot of it to burnout. And, you know, I'm an old-timer, and I remember when Jennifer Capriati, I think, was just turning 14, they let her play some tournaments before she actually turned 14 by six weeks or something, and they brought in the rules to, you know, not play as many tournaments at a younger age. It, it must be hard to find sort of some secret formula that um, prevents some kind of burnout for just about anybody, any young good tennis player coming up. Um, any advice, or is, is you just have to learn on your own? I think a lot of it is learning on your own and understanding how much uh, you can travel through the year and also finding people around you who are going to support you um, and understanding when you are tired and when you do need a break. But um, what I feel might be different than other, other players and I think it's sort of uh, learn as you go kind of thing. And what is uh, Rebecca Marino, what's her schedule like for the rest of the next few months? Uh, <laughs> good question. I don't 100% know my schedule. I'm working on that right now. The plan is maybe to go to Japan for some $25,000 tournaments just to get a lot more match play uh, after having a bit of a, a slow or uh, non-existent off-season with injury. So I just want to get my rhythm again. And after that, I have no idea. So uh, when I know, you'll know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and looking back on everything, um, getting to number 38 in the world mm -hmm. uh, in a competitive uh, sport like this, 
um, no matter what happens from now on. How special is that for you that you'll always have that? Yeah, I think I'm really fortunate that I got up to the ranking um, of 38 in the world. I oftentimes forget um, that I was there just because I kind of went through the motions of it, as most tennis players do. But um, if I take a step back and I look at everything I've accomplished both then and now, I'm, I'm really proud of everything I've done and everything I've worked through. And I don't know if it was a high point or not, but I think most people remember you playing Venus on Arthur Ashe Stadium uh, at the U.S. Open. Yeah. Um, what kind of a rush was that, and, and what kind of a memory do you have of that match playing in such a big, uh, big stadium? Uh, for me, it was really not as big a deal as other people make out when I went out. I just wanted to give it my best shot. I knew I was the underdog, and I just told myself not to look up, so I didn't see how big the stadium was. And uh, yeah, so it wasn't wasn't that crazy. I mean, it was. I felt like I belonged on the court with her, and believe that, and that's why it was such a close match. And uh, Still really proud of that moment. And there was a nice compliment she said afterwards about that she felt like she was playing herself. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always great to get compliments from uh, world-class players like her. Rebecca, thanks for talking to us. Thanks, Tom. <laughs>